What's going on, everybody? John Hendricks, happy to be back home, coming at you with another edition of Training Camp Recaps. Day 18, moved indoors, came back from California, get into much more of that here soon. But of course, before we get kicked off, we wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor today, Justin Burgess over at BenPro. If you have a business in the greater New Orleans region, be sure to hit him up. He can help you out with employee benefits or any type of health insurance. 504-888-8038. Again, thank you to Justin Burgess of BenPro for sponsoring all of our training camp videos. So day 18, day 18, <laughs> let's get it right, right? Uh, before we get into practice, let's talk about California. That was interesting. Um, I experienced my first earthquake. Now, a lot of people that were there at SoFi were like, oh, I didn't even feel it and stuff. Now, let me just tell you, I'm a Southern Louisiana guy. I was up in the press box and it started doing this. I started doing this, I was swaying back and forth. And like, you know, somebody that's at church getting into that worship music and stuff, that kind of sway. And I'm like, what in the world's going on? And all of a sudden here comes the emergency alert for an earthquake. I don't know what to do. Nobody's really panicking. So again, it was like a 5.1 magnitude. Again, I'll go happily the rest of my life without having to experience that ever again. But it was still a fun time out there. You obviously saw our joint practice recaps and stuff. All the stuff that we put out on Saints.media and the preseason game, all the recaps, stuff that we learned. So be sure to check those out. But let's talk about day 18 of Saints training camp. We're getting close to the end. It's hard to believe that we were like, I'm football starved to get a little bit of action to here's the brief lull and, and such till training camp returns. Training camp's here and we have gone through it really quickly, two preseason games. But 14 players not in attendance. Let's start there as we always do uh, for today. So let's run down everybody, right? And the first one we'll point out is Brian Edwards. He got waived today, so he wasn't at practice. But again, this is not really a total shock because you can't commit offensive pass interference. Two of them wipe away touchdowns, you know, not make catches when you are supposed to and then expect to make this team. Again, he had a rough start to training camp. Um, he came on within the last week and a half, I believe, but this might have just done them in. And so I think it's a tip to uh, nod uh, to the hat or tip of the cap to guys like Shaq Davis or John Trey Kirkland, some of the guys that are really doing what they're supposed to. A.T. Perry, I mean, this is two veterans that were brought in, him and James Washington, that we thought were going to actually be able to do something at some point, even make the uh, – some actually believe in he'd make the final roster. That ain't happening. So good news for them. So – he wasn't at camp. Let's talk about some of the others. Taysom Hill, he's been out with that oblique strain. Like we said last week, he is, was uh, at, at Chargers joint practices on Friday, so that's a good sign, but obviously he's not expected. Traquan Smith still dealing with the groin injury, and you're going to find a common theme that a lot of Saints players are dealing with groin injuries. It's kind of a weird thing. I think it's something worth asking Dennis Allen, but of course he's not like a medical guy, so I mean it's probably not going to have too much insight, but – Again, we haven't seen Traquan Smith since day nine of training camp. That's a long time. He's been out a good, a good bit, and so I don't like his chances. You know, Jesse James wasn't there. He's been out since day 12. He's also dealing with the groin. Uh, you've got Rashid Shahid that's been out. Again, he was last week. Um, they're going to ease him back into action. He's got a groin injury. Marshawn Lattimore with a knee. Again, Dennis Allen reiterating that it was nothing significant based on last week, so we're expecting to see him back sooner rather than later. Again, I don't think there's any reason to roll him out there, but make sure that he's right, 100% right for the season. Kirk Merritt dealing with that hamstring before. Now, he only played three snaps against the Chargers, and so one was on offense, two was on special teams, and he was working. I was noticing him doing stuff off to the sideline. It doesn't seem like he's right. You know, he got one pass and then had the two special teams rep. That's a concern for sure, um, but it also paves the way for guys like Ellis Merriweather and perhaps Daryl Williams to make this ro uh, to make things a little bit interesting. I won't say make the roster, but at least practice squad. Smoke Monday was out for a personal reason. Excuse today. Ryan Connolly had a significant knee injury that's going to require him to miss some time, as Dennis Allen told us. That's tough because I thought he played really well. He played well, well in the preseason game. I thought he could be new Andrew Dow, but that's tough to see, see him uh, go down. You know, those types of things unfortunately happen. Um, Nico Lalos also dealing with a groin injury. So, again, he's uh, one of those that's, that stood out in the preseason. You know, he was held out today. But, again, he's day-to-day. He's -day. 
him and guys like Daryl Williams who left practice, um, they're expected to be day to day and will come back. So don't worry about that. Landon Young still out with the MCL injury. Calvin Throckmorton, he left Sunday's game with a rib injury. Uh, he wasn't out there. Jimmy Graham, we know this kind of dealing with some personal things right now. But the encouraging thing, something Dennis Allen told us after practice, is that he expects him back on the practice field as early as tomorrow, which would be Wednesday. We'll see what happens. But obviously, the medical test, things that happen out in, in California, you know, it's not totally get muddy and go into all the stuff. But look, the bottom line is that Jimmy is expected to be OK and he's expected to play football for this team. So I think that's really encouraging. Um, again, we've touched on Jesse James and then Lynn Bowden Jr. is another one just dealing with injuries. Um, you know, so injuries they suck on the good news the good front demario davis andres pete and cesar ruiz all were back in the mix doing team drills super encouraging sign i know they were just in shells today but that is an encouraging sign step forward i think demario kind of hinted at that earlier today saying back to business but that's a good thing seeing him back in there um interesting you know as far as today goes the flow so one of the things I put in my notes and recap is that, you know, there was just a different flow. It just didn't have the spirited energy that we usually see. Now, look, this team is coming back from the West Coast. This is their first practice since they played a game on Sunday, right? And, you know, believe me, they got in, from my understanding, 3, 3.30 in the morning on Monday morning. So, you know, get the day off and then come back to work. So what I mean by not as spirited, I think the offense was going pretty high tempo today. The defense – not necessarily matching it. I think that was maybe by design it planned out, you know, but like guys like Lonnie Johnson Jr. had a real chance to make an interception or other guys have a chance to make pretty big hits or something, pass breakups. I mean, there's things like that that happen. So I'm not too, too worried about those types of stuff. But, you know, it's um just interesting. We got to see a lot of team periods. Look, I tell you what, Shaq Davis has continued to look really good. You know, I caught up with him after uh, his, his big day against the Chargers. Again, I think he's he's just playing with a lot of confidence. He knows the playbook, and I think that's a big deal for him. And now he's just kind of going out there. And also talked to him today because he's doing some special team work, him and A.T. Perry. And I think those are two that, you know, keep an eye on because I believe A.T. Perry is going to make this roster. Shaq Davis is an interesting one. I don't know if they're going to keep six receivers, but right now if I had to pick outside of Rashid Shaheed, Michael Thomas, and, and obviously Chris Olave, it's Keith Kirkwood. Then A.T. Perry, but Shaq Davis is making a case. I don't know if he's going to make the roster. Definitely priority practice squad. But, look, he made some really good plays again today. Uh, a really good throw from Jameis. On a, it was actually a safety blitz from Jordan Howden. So that was one of those plays where could have went for a sack. Play was allowed to develop. Also, Lonnie Johnson Jr. could have probably made the pick the way he was in positioning. He actually made it a point to come tell us. He's like, you know, I'm going to chalk that as a pick, right? he was in the positioning for it. So that just kind of speaks to what happened for today. But he had a good day of practice. Um, you know, Derek Carr missed him down the seam, a little bit of an overthrow. But, again, I liked what I've seen from Shaq Davis. I think he's somebody to keep an eye on. Um, another one that stood out today, Tyron Matthew. Uh, again, we talk about Tyron. I think when Tyron plays and just some of the things that we've seen from him, when it comes to the end zone and it just, just plays, Tyron's the guy. He made some the other week in practice. He made one today, breaking up a, a, a route to, to Jawan Johnson in the end zone. It looked like, I mean, Jawan could have had it, but Tyron goes up, puts a hand on it, and bats it up. And, I mean, that's that's some other players. It might have been a touchdown. So that's always good to see that. Um, you know, somewhat lethargic. Another big play uh, that didn't happen but was almost is in the team. We had Jameis Winston throwing a ball. It was intended for Foster Moreau. So Moreau and Zach Bond both went up for the ball. Bond had it. It was an interception, but Moreau played some really good defense to knock it away at the last second. But kind of one of those, whew, thank goodness it didn't happen. Um, but, you know, it's all the things that you would come to expect. Chris Olave had a big catch, some a deep one down the uh, middle, about 34 yards is what I charted for that one. Um, they did red zone. You know, uh, again, another one that I say stood out. Again, I really liked his preseason game that he had, and I think he's just continuing to build on each day. You know how play, players say the one percent every bit better every day type thing. Brian Brisset is a perfect example of that. He's playing with a ton of confidence right now. He's getting into the backfield. He's blowing up plays. I think this guy is maybe a little underrated, but I also feel like he's going to show everybody like that he's better than what people thought he was going to be. And so again. 
I'm not going to say let's get on the hype train. I just feel like that defensive line and the interior, the way it's come together, A, is more athletic, and that's no secret. B, is going to be much better against the run. And C, I think you're going to see more of a pass rush here from the interior, which I think they got, they need. They have to have that. Um, you know, talk to Peyton Turner, speaking to pass rush, you know, asking about his big play. He's just playing with a lot of confidence. And I think that's the biggest thing with a lot of these guys in training camp. A lot of these guys that need to play certain ways, they got to play with confidence. And, you know, it's one of those that that's the only way that they're, you're going to continue to get better. And, and I think Turner's a great example of that. Brian Bisset is another one of that, another example of that. Uh, Jordan Howden's another one, A.T. Perry. I mean, these are – you could keep going on and on, and I'm not going to sit here and go through the whole rookie class yet, but uh, uh, Jake Hayner's another one. He had a couple of good plays today. He, he Man, his the way he throws on the run is just pretty nuts, and you saw it against the Chargers, but we can see it today, a boot right, find somebody with ease, the way he runs and, and is able to throw on the run. It's all good things to see. You know, I, I just feel like this Saints team is – coming together really quickly. I don't think there's as many surprises or shocks that are going to happen to this final roster when it comes time. Um, I did put out a final roster prediction on Tuesday, or sorry, on Monday before we left for that flight out of California, which all the Saints writers were on there, all the beat reporters, uh, pretty much all of the contingent was left in Los Angeles. Everybody was there, the TV crews, uh, Saints guys, uh, as far as the writers, like team writers and such, and their social media guys and stuff, you know, Nick was on the plane too, Brooke, all those guys. And we were all there. And so thankfully we all got home, but uh, quite an experience, but uh, just thankful to be back home. And, you know, I don't say I missed the hot weather, but uh, it beats the heck out of a tropical storm and an earthquake. So huh, it's just one of those things. But look, uh, today, kind of a, not a, big deal practice again it matters right because they still work on special teams work on things but you know look the biggest takeaways i'd say is you know we have a good jimmy graham update that's encouraging davis ruiz pete back at practice that's a good one speaking of pete second team left guard that's where he's at and what's interesting is nick Saldaveri ran over to right guard when pete came back in so before it was lewis kid and nick Saldaveri. Just an observation that Salivari moved to right guard. I know they like his versatility. That'll be something to pay attention to, especially in the last preseason game. But, look, it's what we believe is going to be the starting offensive alliance. Penning, James Hurst, Eric McCoy, then Ruiz, and then obviously Ramchek. And so I feel really strong, strongly about it. I just don't know if they're going to make it 17 games. And I think that depth has got to be shored up. So we'll see how things go. But um, – We'll get more practice. We'll get a couple more t this week. We'll get one on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They should be in the Superdome. Saturday is going to be a walkthrough. The Texans come Sunday. You know, and by the way, if you haven't heard, they canceled joint practices. There's a mutual decision between the coaches. Uh, but, you know, D'Amico Ryan's talking about this Texans team's dealing with a lot of injuries. And so wanting to rehab some of his guys at the facility that they have out there and such. And look, it's it would have been great to see more joint practices. I think each team should have two sets of joint practices. They're more valuable than I believe uh, some of the, the preseason action has been, especially for the starters. Cause I mean, again, I can point it out on Friday, Justin Herbert. I mean, he got, he had 25 passes. He took over 30 plus snaps. I mean, this is not just a, a little Olay thing. I mean, this is valuable insight that you're getting and valuable reps and experience. So we'll see how it plays out. But again, tomorrow we'll be back at it. I think we'll have a little bit more up-tempo practice. We're going to be looking out for some of these injured guys. Teams at 89 players on the roster. I don't know if they're going to backfill that Brian Edwards spot, but there are some legitimate concerns. And, oh, by the way, one last thing I'll say is Jalen Smith. I think he's somebody that's coming on really strong. I think he had a good game. He had some good practice last week. He's somebody that, again, has probably got to learn a little bit more of the special teams aspect, but I feel like he's going to carve himself a spot on the roster. And we'll talk more about that soon enough and – Again, I gave you my thoughts on it. Be sure to go to saints.media. Check out all the work that we done uh, that we did. I didn't even talk about Marcus May. That is another one. And Kai Harley. Jeez, thinking through back in the day. That's just kind of how my mind works. Again, there is no structure. There is no rehearsal. There is no thing. This is all organic. This is what you get when you have feet covering this stuff. But first, let me just say, 
Kai Harley getting promoted to assistant general manager. Man, that's it's great. Kai Harley is an, an amazing individual. Um, I very much encourage you guys to go check out the video that we have on Saints News Network talking about autism awareness and kind of what he's doing to pilot some of those efforts. But he's just a great human being. Great story. He's super smart. I don't want to say the Saints may be setting themselves up for the future. I don't. I, and again, I'm not going to tell you that Mickey Loomis is going to walk away. I think Mickey Loomis still has a lot of years left him, but he's the longest tenure GM, I believe, right now. He's been with his team for a long time. And uh, look, I think when it's all said and done, either him or Kai Harley or Jeff Ireland, they may take the reins. I, I would expect Jeff Ireland to get some calls next off season, maybe Kai Harley, but I, I think Kai would like to stay in New Orleans. And I, I know Jeff has found his niche in New Orleans as well and the work that they've been doing. But, uh, you know, congratulations to him. It's a, a great accomplishment. It just speaks to who he is and the Saints. I mean, again, incredible story. Look it up. Go into it later. And then obviously Marcus May has another big one. His February 2021 DUI arrest, that's all resolved now. It was when he was with the Jets. Um, had to deal with it was an incident in Florida where he got arrested. It's the outcome is that it's a six month probation, his six months on his suspended license. Again, um, you know, so we'll have to see what happens. The NFL is going to come in in their discipline. I believe it's going to be a three game suspension. That's usually the baseline for a DUI, unless something else comes up that just compels them or something. But again, taking a plea deal here, getting some probation, and, and obviously he's going to have to serve some community service 50 hours is what it is. And so, um, you know, that's not going to be too good for the Saints. I mean, I know the first three games, a lot of people are like, oh, no big deal, Alvin Kamara. But Marcus May has played extremely well this training camp. He's healthy. I think him and Tyron Matthew have got a better cohesion together in that back end. Um, so, again, that could be a Jordan Howden. That could be a Lonnie Johnson Jr. I think those two are probably you guys that are going to take those snaps. We'll see. But that's going to do it for day 18 of Saints training camp. A lot to download, a lot to take in. Again, if you need anything, give me a shout. Hit me up on all the social channels. And, guys, don't forget, if you are looking to buy tickets, be sure to go use my code on SeatGeek for your first purchase. It's the code Hendrix. Hendrix, just like Jimmy, not like the gen, to get $20 off of your first purchase. Great deal. Use it. The football season is coming up. It's not just football. Use it in college, use it in hockey, use it in basketball, all the places you can use SeatGeek. Be sure you use my code. Thanks, guys. That's going to do it. John Hendricks signing out for Saints News Network. Be good people.